me that that he had made you an evangelism center. He had opened your door there in your business. It's just like people are coming through the gate, getting off I-65, coming into the gate of the presence of the Lord, and he was going to give you the power of the Holy Ghost, words of wisdom and words of knowledge to be able to minister to the people that come in your business place, and it'd be far beyond the place to where you sell food. It'd be a place of the presence of God that he would manifest himself in your business and in your lives for his glory and your good. And I praise God for it. Hallelujah. Evangelism. Evangelism outside the walls. Amen. If it takes place in here, that's good. But we need to go into the world, amen, with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Are we hot, Brother Mike? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to you that are watching by the way of Facebook today. We're just glad to have you with us. Brother Travis, would you come here this morning and lead us in prayer? And we got that hooked up for the people at home uh, can uh, receive that prayer as well. And we just, we're just we just grateful to be here today. Aren't you glad to be here today? Praise God. Amen. Go ahead, brother. To your presence and and uh, in a in the right way, Lord, and and with the right attitude, and and uh, we want you to receive it. We want our prayers to be heard, Lord. And and uh, I read in Isaiah 58, it was talking about uh, uh, the wrong way to worship you and and uh, come into your presence. And we don't want to do that, Lord. We want to. We want to be humble before you, Lord. We want you to be first, and we want to just lay aside our selfish desires, Lord. And, and uh, Lord, we just want to be in your presence, Lord. So we just invite you in here. And, Lord, uh, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you'll be in the midst. So, Lord, we want you to be in our midst, Lord, and receive our worship, receive our praise unto you. And I pray, Lord, that it'll just be a... Uh, just a sweet smell until you this morning, Lord. And we love you and praise you and thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be turned on, ain't you? <laughs> Little button up there at the top. You see it? It's up there at the top. Well, praise the, God, praise the Lord. Again, welcome. I'm glad that we serve a mighty good God, aren't you? This has been a great week, and we appreciate the Lord and all the things that's been done and being done. And uh, next Sunday at 9.30, we'll begin our Sunday school program back again. I hadn't got to talk to all the teachers, but uh, I'm sure everybody will be in agreement with that. We'll be looking forward to getting back. Uh, those that's in, interested in praying, uh, that's going to start at 9.30, our Sunday school. So we'll have to figure out uh, if you have to come in prayed up or we'll have to find you a spot somewhere. Maybe if you're really inclined to pray, maybe... Uh, pray for a little bit during the first of Sunday school or something. We'll work on that between now and then. But Sunday school starts at 930, so praise the Lord. Glad to get back into that. Also want to announce that the 18th of September, uh, I didn't get this on the handout for uh, this month's calendar, but Sister Renee Audubon will be here ministering on the feast and festivals. That's a Friday night. That's the toughest Friday night of the month, the third Friday night. Uh, after food bank, but she'll be here. That's the beginning of, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, Rosh, Rosh Hashanah, Shana Hutai Ma Botai, what? Uh, Rosh Hashanah. It's a 10-day holy day. It's a high holy day, actually, and it finishes then on Sunday, uh, I think the 27th, uh, with uh, Yom Kippur, which is a day of atonement and but it's a it's a, a really exciting time and if if I'm uh, if if I was going to study out the uh, various things of God the festivals and all I'd say Jesus ought to come back during that time. I mean that's to me it's a perfect time. Uh, which I don't care if it comes any time. I mean that's left up to Him. I got no control over that. But in my mind's eye, that's a perfect time to fulfill the festivals right there. But uh, He's He's not 
bound and determined by what I believe. <laughs> That's just where I'm at. So we invite you to be active, spiritually active, do what? 6.30. And I've also asked her to come and to teach the first, uh, the, the Wednesday night to 9th and Wednesday night to 16th on those also, and then to wrap it up on the 18th. So I think she will do that. She's still contemplating. Uh, she couldn't this next Wednesday night in which we wouldn't be ready in here. Uh, she's a great teacher on uh, on those things. I've heard her to somewhat, and you'll you'll be you'll be really glad to come. It'd be two Wednesday nights, the ninth and the sixteenth, and then the eighteenth will be the wrap up of teaching on those festivals. That begins like a ten day prayer time. I'd like for us to enter into special prayer during that ten day time. Uh, I believe his name is. Khan, Jonathan Khan has had some videos and things and some things the Lord has showed him, especially about that time. And you can look that up on YouTube or look uh, look it up. I forget the return, maybe it is, is the name of it. I believe the return. Uh, pretty interesting to listen to. So, uh, uh, but you know, let the Holy Ghost be your guide, of course. Our announcements, uh, of course, we continue to pray. And if you have prayer concerns, special prayer needs, you can call Linda or myself anytime and uh, help us to get that into the prayer force. And if you'd like to be a part of the prayer force, give Linda your text number so when she fills out a prayer, it can be sent to you and not have to fill it out 50 times. So we can be on a, a list, and, and I know several people's got those list groups that pray, so when they send it to one, it, it gets to a bunch. So if you'd like to be a part of that, give Linda your text number and she can fix a group up to get you involved in that. Uh, the, uh, of course, we need to clean bags continually, and I, I know we had a, I stuffed a big black bag full of bags that was brought last week, and there's another black bag brought this week, so we're doing good with the clean plastic bags, and I thank you for doing that. And I want to remind you again of the little Christmas shoe project. Uh, the table is in the foyer out there uh, of where you can give towards those shoes for kids uh, around the world. It's, most of them never had a pair of shoes, and they're $3.60 a pair. And uh, I'd like for us to send a bunch. Last year, I think we, I think we bought 200 pairs last, week, last year, and I'd like for us to do that again uh, this year. And uh, we responded real good last week, so if you can, uh, there's a place out there to... to put your money in for that, and we appreciate your giving in that special uh, project. So again, uh, Sunday School starts next week at 9.30, and uh, 9.30 to 10.25, so we can get time to get settled in up here uh, before our worship starts, and uh, we'll be talking about the prayer concerns of how to handle that. If you want to get here early and pray from 9 to 9.30, or 9.15 to 9.30, if you're an early riser, I'm up here by 8 o'clock, so you can come and pray as long as you want to. We'll fix you a spot somewhere. We've got plenty of rooms, and we've we got an upper room up there. If you want to climb the steps, we've got an upper room, and you can just raise a roof if you want to. Amen. Everybody good? We invite, to, are glad to have our visitors with us today from Colorado, New York, and wherever else you're from. Uh, the Lord said they'd come from the north, east, south, and west. Lee Grand would indeed be Le big or Lee huge, so we're glad that you're here today and want you to just join in our worship and praise and be blessed and be a blessing. Amen. Anything else I was supposed to say that I didn't say, sister? Well, all right. Are you ready to put your worship on this morning? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Brother Dennis, have it. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. We want to... Worship the Lord is our desire to exalt Him today, to lift Him up. I do want to read a little bit, and uh, I want to share a testimony with you. But uh, first of all, let me uh, read here in Romans chapter 8. It's talking about God's love. How many know God loves people? Amen. Amen. God loves people. We're so thankful for who He is and for His kingdom. Who could ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, dangers, and death threats? No, for they are all impotent to hinder 
omnipotent love. Even though it is written all day long we face death threats for your sake, God, we are considered to be nothing more than sheep uh, to be slaughtered. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors, and, has, and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There's no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Amen. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? What can separate you from God's love? Nothing can separate us from God's, it said, passionate love. He's passionate about people. How many know that there's an adversary here on the planet? But how many know that Jesus said, All power and authority is being given unto me. Go therefore. Amen. I want to share a personal testimony with you. Um, my wife, Carrie, she's not here this morning. She's playing, uh, excuse me, she took Samuel to play in a basketball tournament. He's been shut down for about seven months with this COVID stuff, and he's dying to get back on the court. So they're playing a tournament in Franklin, Tennessee. But she's not here this morning, but she said it was okay if I shared her testimony. My wife, uh, and one of the reasons I want to do this is last week I was talking about people that were uh, suffering from anxiety and depression, right? And I said that uh, one of the things I said was, God doesn't just have the solution. He is the solution. So basically, her testimony, I want to elaborate a little bit on that, if I could, please. So basically, my wife, when she was about 15 or 16 years old, she suffered from depression and was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So she suffered from anxiety and depression for years. Uh, we married when she was 22, and about three years later, after we'd gotten married, um, we were talking about uh, we wanted to have children. And her doctor and the, um, at the time she worked at a pharmacy, and they recommended that she be completely off all medication before trying to get pregnant. So um, again, she'd been on antidepressants at that time probably for uh, six or eight years, probably seven or eight years at that time. Um, and if you know anything about that, some of that stuff is difficult to, uh, to get off of, the antidepressants. Some of that stuff is difficult to try to wean yourself off of that. So over a six-month period of time, she tried to wean herself off of that. And what the doctors recommended was she take a low dosage, start with what she was taking daily, and basically break it down over a long period of time, you know, several weeks, right, just taking a smaller dosage. So that she had these capsules, so she would open the capsules up and just pour out, you know, just a, again, basically trying to wean herself off of that. But each time, three different times over a six-month period, she had the same results. And that was uh, she was sick to her stomach, nauseous. And, um, and, you know, if anybody's experienced depression, you know what that's like. You just don't feel like doing anything, right? And you can talk to those folks and you can say, hey, just look at our blessings. Just Let's just count our blessings. Let's just uh, look at what God's done. You know, life is good, you know, but they really can't see it. It's hard to uh, shake somebody. You can't talk somebody out of depression. I've tried. But um, the same results each time when she got down to a very low dosage of these antidepressants, she was sick to her stomach, just laid in bed, just felt terrible, just didn't feel like doing anything. So she'd get back on her antidepressants, and, of course, she'd be okay and go back to work. And uh, But, again, the same results three times. <clears throat> One Sunday morning, this is the good part. One Sunday morning, uh, our church, we attended Faith Worship Center in Bargetown, Kentucky. We were there for about 12 years. And our pastor said, is anybody here that hasn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Carrie had gotten saved when she was probably uh, 20 years old or so. But she had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So our pastor says, anybody here that hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, invite them down the front. 
wanted to pray with them, right? There was two ladies carrying another, uh, another young lady that, that went forward. Carrie received the baptism of the Holy Spirit right then with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And she was speaking in tongues. The pastor took his microphone and put it in front of her mouth. And she said she heard herself over the uh, speakers, you know, in the church. And she was kind of shocked. She was like, she didn't think that was, you know, didn't realize that was her, but it was the Holy Spirit basically, you know, praying through her with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So here's what happened. She said she felt like the Lord told her to get off her antidepressants that day. So 17 years ago, <laughs> she quit taking her antidepressants. And guess what? No side effects, no symptoms, no nauseous, no laying around, just felt terrible. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit... Um, so the reason I'm saying that is, you know, last week I didn't really give <clears throat> give instruction or, or, you know, I said God is the solution. I didn't tell you how. You know, number one, he's given us his son. His son, his blood was shed for the remission of sins so we can get that away from us and move that off of us. Number two, and this is what I think that in the, in the church we're not doing a great job of just yet. Number two, uh the very next thing to happen was that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you read in the book of Acts, the majority of the time it was through the laying on of hands, but uh, there was a couple cases. In the case of Cornelius and his family household, um, the Holy Spirit fell on them when they heard the gospel, right? And that does happen, but the majority of the time it's through the laying on of hands. So um, I just want to say it's so important. The Holy Spirit uh, is so important. Jesus said, wait for the gift, G-I-F-T, the gift the Father has promised. He said, wait for the gift the Father's promised. He's referred to as the Comforter, the Counselor, amen? He's referred to as the Paraclete. And Paraclete, if you look that up, that word, that's where we get our word parallel. So if you picture two parallel lines... That's where we get our word parallel, comes from paraclete. Basically, the Holy Spirit walks with us, right? He's with us. The Bible also said that, that he takes together, takes hold together with us. When we're praying for something or when we're doing something, the Holy Spirit is there to assist, right? The Bible says he's the instructor. He'll lead us into all truths. The Bible says that um, those that are the sons and daughters of God will be led by the, the Spirit of God. Right, so he's our leader, he's our instructor, he's the comforter, he's the counselor, he's the helper, he's the paraclete. Amen. The Lord didn't intend for us to do this without the Holy Spirit. He did not intend for us to walk this out. It's, it's going to be difficult. It's wonderful to accept the Lord as your Savior, but we need the Holy Spirit to really be effective to be successful, to be victorious, to walk this thing out, to be the conquerors. It talks about in Revelations. It's important we get the Holy Spirit. So uh, the reason I said that was last week, again, I said that there are a lot of people that are suffering from anxiety and depression. That's not God's plan. That is not God's plan for your life. That's a plan of the adversary, a depressed spirit. If you look up the word depressed, if there's a depression, there's a sunken place. If you can imagine a basketball or a ball or something that's about half full of air or less, you know, there's going to be a sunken spot in there. Your spirit is depressed. You need the Holy Spirit. One other thing that I almost forgot about, Carrie also at that time she was wearing glasses. She couldn't see far away. Um, when she got filled with the Holy Spirit, guess what? She didn't have to wear her glasses anymore. Wow. <laughs> is God good? So when we stand up here and we're singing about the goodness of God, we've got a reason to sing about the goodness of God. Amen? It's, it's wonderful that, that uh, Jesus was obedient even unto death. Salvation is awesome. But we also need the Holy Spirit. So today, while we're worshiping the Lord, it's a perfect opportunity for somebody here that you're suffering from uh, anxiety and depression or fear or some of that garbage is trying to torment you. Please come forward. Please come forward. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not your fault. A lot of times something happens to somebody, 
maybe something happened to them as a young child or something, and some of this stuff comes along as a result of that. So uh, please don't be embarrassed, but if you're suffering from anxiety and depression, please see Pastor Miss Linda and let them pray for you this morning to receive the Holy Spirit. That's God's Spirit is what we're talking about, right? So I apologize for taking so long, but I felt that that was necessary because we do serve a good God. We serve a great God who loves people. He loves you. He loves you. So we're just going to praise him this morning. The song says, I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. Amen. Anybody believe that? about now good praise the lord i count on one thing the same god that never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God is never late, is working all things out, working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh, my. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God in heaven will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God in heaven is working all things now. Working all things.
decision. Lord, we choose to praise. Why? Because you're worthy. We understand, Lord, that you are worthy. There's no other name by which men might be saved other than your name. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we, it's not...
Amen. He is good. God, you are good. Jesus said, there is none good but the Father. He said, don't call me good. He said, there's none good but the Father. So, Father, we're thankful for who you are, that you are good, that you loved, that you so loved the world, that you sent your only Son. Sing praises to the Lord. Oh, praises to the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the Lord. Oh, the
Sing it again. Lift our hands to the Lord this morning. Sing praises to the Lord. Oh. Every name. What is that name? I'm going to say it again. Jesus. 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 There's something about that name. Just something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is the name of authority, the name of power, the name that I have given to my church to take that name and do what Jesus, the person, did when he walked the earth. You had years to study him and to see how he acted to see how he reacted and how he responded. So I encourage you, church, I encourage you, body of Christ, to take his name and do what he did. For I've given you the worth, the authority, and the power of the name of Jesus to do so. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If I give you a credit card, you know the business here at church, and I just give you a credit card and say, now, if you're out, you know, and about, and you see something that the church needs, the cleaner persons the other day left me three or four things on the desk that they need. But what if I just give him a credit card and said, now, you know, any time you see that you need supplies, just here's the credit card, just go ahead and get them. And I haven't done that, but that's why he put it on the... But what if he, I give him that and he just left me a note saying, uh, you know, you need to get these things. But I've said, I've given you the power, I've given you the ability, you get them. You see what I mean? We're waiting on God to do something he gave us the power to do. Sometimes we say, why don't God do something about that? Well, he did. And he gave you the calling card. Huh? Amen. And he said, I'll be in you. I'll abide with you. And you can come to the place to where you, I'll do what you will. If my word abides in you and you abide in my will, I'll do what you will. How about that? So our wills ought to match his will. And then we realize that whatever he would do, what he give us the power in the name of Jesus to go ahead and do that. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, aren't you, aren't you blessed today? Amen. How many of you really believe that you'll not go by the way of the grave, that there's going to be a trumpet sound, there's going to be a blast, and you're going out of here? I don't know. I don't know. People all over through times have believed that, and here we are. 
But I do, I do believe that. I mean, I believe I'm not trying to put nothing down on my grandkids or great-grandkids. Go ahead and plan your families and live on. But praise God, I believe soon and very soon I'm going to see the king. And I don't care a thing in the world about going to a grave. <laughs> I ain't going. <laughs> They may put this caucus in there, but I ain't going. Amen. Praise the Lord. Will you come this morning and worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings? Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, soon and very soon. We are going to see the King, I believe, soon and very soon. We are going to see the King, yes, soon and very soon. We are going to see the King, hallelujah. We are going to see, I believe, soon and very soon. We are going to see the King, I believe, soon and very soon. Soon. We are going to see the King well, very soon. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see well, more payments there. We are going to see the King. No more payments. We are going to see the King. Payment book. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to mask up there. There's no more mask up there. We are going to be done away with. No more mask up there. We are masked. There's no more We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Lord, I believe it will soon, very soon. We are going to see. We are going. Hallelujah, soon and very soon. We are going. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going. Believe soon and very soon we are going to see. I believe it soon and very soon we are going. Hallelujah! Soon and very soon we are going. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, won't it be wonderful there, the old song says. Well, I tell you, it ain't half bad over here if you keep your mind straightened out right. Amen. This is a pretty good place. You know, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. Right? Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Well, bring it on in here, boys and boys, <laughs> boys and boys. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the Lord. Brother Scott, would you bless this offering this morning? Oh, Father, we just love and praise you of all things and everything, Father. Thank you for this offering, Lord, and thank you for these wonderful people that's here today, Father. And our wonderful pastor, the message is going to come forward, Father. People we delivered, salvations, whatever needed, Father, come forward. We just love and thank you and praise you for this money as well, Father, for the hand, ones that handed it to be blessed back. We just love and thank you. You are Jesus. You are everything. Amen. Lord, you can be seated this morning. Thank you for your participation in the service. Thank you, each and every one of you, your musical talents and gifts and abilities for using them for the Lord. Well, next week again, we'll start our Sunday school program at 930, and that means everything else will be, uh, be uh, open to the nursery be open and children's church will go back to the regular routine, whatever it is. And then the week after, not this Wednesday night, but the week after, uh, we'll be in uh, Wednesday night service at 630 as normal. So we're trying to get back to normal, normal, whatever normal is. <laughs> what is normal anyhow? It's been so long since we had normal, <laughs> we've almost gotten into abnormal, hadn't we? Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be whatever it is, normal or abnormal or whatever we are. 
We're just so grateful to be here. Praise the Lord. I'm like Minnie Pearl. I'm just glad to be here today. I'm not got my hat on, but I am glad to be here and glad to have the visitors with us today and Sherry and his, her daughter. I can't remember your name. Tanya. Tanya. Praise the Lord. Well, you got another sister named Fanchon. That's it. I, I get that. There's two mixed up, but we're glad to have them with us today. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you would going to spend a little time with, with uh, them after service today, and it's just good to have them. Good to have all of you, and praise the Lord, we're just so, we're so blessed that you would choose Emmanuel Ministry Church to attend, and so thankful to have you with us today on uh, live Facebook. If you have your Bible with you, we encourage you to turn to uh, Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. I, I just want to encourage you uh, as Christians, as born-again children of God, uh, to stay the course uh, to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold on the things of God. And don't let the pressures and the tactics and the, the things that's going on around us uh, get control of you to where that's all you talk about, to where that you, you make more mention of the problems and the difficulties than you do the solution. We're not to talk the problem, we're to talk the solution. Amen. And Jesus is our solution. He is the answer. He is the way, the truth, the life. And if we'll just keep, keep listening to Jesus and keep looking to Jesus and keep praising Jesus, keep following Jesus, we'll have Jesus kind of, of results. Amen. And we don't want the devil and anything, any tactic he has to detour us off the straight and the narrow that he has for us. The devil don't care which ditch you're in. He just don't want you in the straight. Amen. He wants you to get you in the, in the ditch of apathy or the ditch of excess. And he just don't want you down that straight road, but that's exactly where God has for you. Amen. And I just want to encourage you to take a look at what God says belongs to you if you'll take a hold of this thing and allow it to manifest itself. You don't have to make God do anything. If you'll receive the seed of God's word, the seed of God's word has within it the ability to produce the God kind of results. Amen. If you'll just allow that seed to come and lodge in the good soil of your heart, and you'll fight off the, the, the bras and the things of this world that tries to intertwine or take, take it down, you're going to have to do a little work, and no doubt about that, but the seed within itself in the good soil of your heart will produce a manifold harvest unto God's glory, and you're good. Amen. And the same seed, we've talked about this before. You can go out here in this field, and, or, or right across here, especially in Nebraska and Iowa and places, field them's been up through there driving around, and they'll come down them long fields and just come right up to the road, pick up the planter and go across the road and set her down and go again. Just plumb out of sight. You know, you could take that same seed that you had out there in the very fertilest bottom of that thing and put it on a red hill it's still going to produce of its kind, but it's probably not going to produce as much. But it's not the seed's problem, it's the soil problem. So the seed of God's word is able to produce of its kind. It will produce of its kind. Let it find the good soil of your heart. Let it find the good soil of your heart and also let it be watered with the worship and praise from your mouth. I believe our worship and praise comes, uh, is the watering process. It's what makes the seed produce maximum results. If you're grumpy and gripe and have a low attitude, you'll have a low altitude. Now, Brother Dustin handed me a book a while ago, and, and the name of it is What Attitude Is? An Attitude of Being. An Attitude of Being. So he's written a book, and praise the Lord. I thank you for giving me a copy of that. And I know alti attitude determines altitude. If you got a low flying attitude, you're not going to have a very high altitude. So we need to get the we need to get our praise on. We need to get our thanks on because why? No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. You can howl and moan and groan about what all's going on. Hey, it don't make no difference what's going on. My God's bigger than that. I mean, it does make a little difference, but at the same time, huh? I mean, the the weeds are thick all over the country. Am I going to quit planting? No, I'm on the plant and I'm going to put the herbicide out there and kills the weed seeds. Right. Amen. It's, it's our time. It's a harvest time. It's a great time to be about doing the Father's business. Now, he says this, if blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I just tell you right now, the counsel of the ungodly is on about 79 channels. Amen. Huh? Well, I ain't going to watch them channels. Why do I know about 
What good does it do me to know how many got killed in the church last night? I know there's a bunch of idiots up there. Well, they're pretty plentiful down here. There's no shortage. God, I'm going to keep my eye on the Lord. And I'm going to listen to him. Yes, we pray for them. Yes, I will. And I know there's people watching out for me. I pray for our sheriff department, don't you? Yeah. I pray for our first responders, don't you? Yeah. I believe there's some minute men, so to speak, that's willing to take up arms if our sheriff needs help. I know there's people out there to help him. Yeah. Some hands in the air right now, right in here. Yeah. Go cowboys, go. Well, praise God. Let's just be prepared. Let's not. Huh? If they bring it to us, you know, what's the bag limit? All I need to know. Amen. But we, we're going to do the right thing. And hopefully, if we do the right thing and we keep our eye right, the Spirit of the living God will keep that mess out of our region. But the best thing we can do is be prepared. And if we're prepared, come, if it comes, it comes. We'll deal with it. Same way with a crop. You're going out there sowing seed or planting seed or raising a crop. I don't know for sure what kind of year you're going to have, but if it rains like it has this year, I'm prepared for that. We'll just do what it needs to do for that. I don't know about you. I didn't plan on mowing my yard 623 times this year. <laughs> but praise God, I'll mow it every three days if it takes it. Huh? I, I bailed it, raked it, threw it several times this year. He's got a pretty good silage pile. I appreciate him letting me use his ground for that. Amen. But, but we're just ready. We just, we just got to go for it. Amen. Praise God. And I'm not going to worry or get stressed about it. Why? Because I know God's on my side. The blood's been applied. I'll not be denied. Every promise of God, yes and amen unto me. So the old song says, why should I worry about the highs and the lows? The ups and the downs. When by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He does supply all my need. He is the El Shaddai. I know he looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. All of the earth is his. And the fullness thereof. Everything that I need. I can be sure. Jehovah Jireh, he is my God. Amen. I'm sure of that. Are you sure of that? Yes. Well, if you're sure of that and you know that, you know God's on your side. You know whatever you need, he's going to supply according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. That's a good place to share there. He'll supply all of your needs according to what? The bank? According to what? Our economy? According to his riches and glory by Christ. Church, praise God, this is our greatest hour. Let them bring it to us. Huh? If they want to bring them people to us, let's just get them saved, healed, and delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Send them on. Amen. We ain't going to, we ain't worried about this. Thing. Blessed is a man who doesn't walk in the counsel of them 79 chan channels on your TV, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but are set in the seat of the scornful. But how's this man blessed? How did this man get blessed? His delight. His delight. He delighted in the law of the Lord. He, he didn't, he wasn't depressed because it's time to read his Bible. He wasn't down in the mouth because it's time to attend the assembly. Huh? He, he, he wasn't all bad about it. He didn't have a big lip stuck out at the bottom. No, his delight was in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he thinks about it about three minutes a day. Huh? Yeah, but, you know, did you see what was on channel 16? What about channel 78? What about channel 31? Did you see what they said on Facebook? Did you see this spot right here? I've been sent more stuff in the last three weeks. Videos and things of what, I, if half of what I've been sent happens, we better pray Jesus comes soon. Huh? I mean, everything in the world out there to destroy, to hurt, and to harm, but my Bible says no he's gonna prosper. Amen. I, I, my God's more than enough. 
I, I'm going to keep my eye on the Lord Jesus. My delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law. I'm going to meditate day and night and night and day and night and day and day and night, seven days a week, all the time. Amen. What are you going to do with it? Yes, sir. Huh? Well, I believe if you would, you'd be better off. I really do. I believe you'd be better off. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. I believe you can thank yourself into depression. I believe you can thank yourself into sorrow. I believe you can thank yourself into joy. You can thank yourself into happiness. Amen. I, I believe your thought life is a battleground. The devil knows that. And he's going to try his best to keep something stirred up up in there. Huh? No, the Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3, Thou will keep in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on thee. Right? Perfect peace. He like that. Perfect peace is plumb all right, ain't it? I mean, that's peace at the max. Well, praise God. Why not just go for that? Why not just go for perfect peace? Well, if we want to go for perfect peace, then we're going to have to keep our mind on the things of God. The world ain't going to bring it to you. Amen. Amen. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Well, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Amen. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Now, I know I, know, I remember when we was trying to find peace. It's in another pair of shoes or another pair of slacks or another something, whatever it is you like to do. No, no, that won't get it for you. But what it will do when the bill comes in next month, you'll probably need an antidepressant. <laughs> Amen. It won't bring it to you. No. But now, I mean, you can have peace. You can, you can get, I don't care if you buy up stuff. That's fine. Amen. Just hope you got closet room for it. But nonetheless, we'll get off of that. This world will not bring you those things. That's why, did you, did you know multimillionaires commit suicide? Did you know entertainers that stood before huge crowds and given their life to get to that place killed themselves sometimes right after performance? They, 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 they meditate themselves up and then they have to meditate themselves down. This world don't have the answer, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. And if we'll listen to him and follow his lead, he will lead us into the everlasting life and joy and the joy and abundance. He'll fill our lives with goodness and gladness and we'll be glad. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in the law of the Lord doth he meditate day and night. Listen to what it says about this type of person. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I like the sound of that, don't you? I don't know about you, but I love big trees. I, I, we went all the way to California to see that great big old General Sherman. What a massive tree. How, how many, wasn't it, was it, I forget how many feet across that thing. You just can't believe, they had a, they had a thing out there of the stump, in other words, if it was cut off, what the stump would be like. And I think it was like 31 feet through that thing. A stump. I mean, if you get one here six feet across, that's a pretty good sized tree. Amen. This tree is massive. Biggest massive tree in the world. Not the tallest tree, just it ain't the 300 and some feet tall. In other words, she stood this building on the end, you'd have to stack two of them. This is 180 feet, 360. We put stand this one up, stand another one up. When you when you get by them trees and go to see the top, you don't look up like this. You 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 fall backwards trying to find it. And when you try to take a picture of it, you you can't do justice. I mean, it's like y'all want to be a tree. Amen. A tree planted by God's rivers. You know. A, a, a tree produces a lot of things, not only timber and all, but lodging. You think of the lodging for the fowls and for various things that trees provide. And, and you know, I, I love the 
big pretty grain fields and all, but when you go into a place after they've taken the harvest off and you can't see nothing for miles, what about a, tr what about a poor old bird? I mean, a tree, a bird ought to have a tree to land in, <laughs> you know. I, you know, I, I appreciate trees. And I'd always wished that when I was a young man and bought the farm in the corners of the fields, I'd planted some trees in the corners because most of the time people don't farm out to the corners anyhow. Just left that for shade for the cattle and, and a place for birds. You know, in a hot summer day, a shade tree is really nice, isn't it? Just to get under the shade. And, and God has shade for us. He has a plan for us. And when I think about that, it should be like a tree. Who, who's he talking about? He's talking about a person whose delight is in the law of the Lord. You know, there's a place in the scripture, it's in Matthew. I could look it up, but I'll quote it to you. It says that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my father. And he said, they will come to him and say, but Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out devils in your name? And he said, what? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Interesting scripture, isn't it? Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils in your name? And he said, depart from me. For I never knew you. I've had the privilege lately to spend some time with Mr. Terry Smith. I've known Terry for years, but really didn't know him. We acquainted, speak, you know. But I've gotten to know him. Sad. No, I was kidding. <laughs> Pretty good fella. But see, when, in order to know somebody, you've got to spend some time with them. It's not, you know, people, you, you've met people, right? But you really didn't know them. And, and that's what Jesus wants. He wants just not to meet you at an altar of repentance. But he wants to know you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to be with you day in and day out. And that's when you're going to really find the goody. It's when you really spend time with Jesus and get to know him. And that's when you, I believe your roots will go down and you'll be like a tree. Amen. There's a song about that somewhere. Uh, planted in a tree in there. But anyhow, I won't sing that today. It should be like a tree planted by the rivers. Well, listen to what it says about the person that's not like that. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but they're like chaff, which the wind driveth. You know, some people just have no stability in them. They have no stability. To, they have no anchor bolts in them. They have no root system in them because they have not developed that time with Christ. They have not developed that relationship. They have not developed that, that knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt. He's never going to let me down. Amen. Never going to let me down. He'll never. Amen. Now, Brother Mike Lawson told me many years ago, he shook hands with me and said, Pastor, I'll be the last one to let you down. At that time, he was a grave digger. <laughs> I felt peace, peaceable, and then I got hot flashes. <laughs> but God's not going to let you down. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so he'll never let you down. If you, and if you know that all hell comes against you, God's on your side. It's not, going to, it's not going to be all over with because God has the last say. Amen. It helps you to, to stand strong in the winds of adversity. And they're there. I mean, Jesus himself said we're going to have them. But he said, be a good cheer. I've overcome. Well, praise God, when he overcome, we overcame. How are we going to do that? We're going to listen to him. We're going to heed his voice. We're going to do what he says. If he says move one step to the right, well, praise God, I'm heading to the right. I can't help what's coming. He knows what I need to do. I want to develop an ear to him. It's better than what I see with my eyes. It's better than what I feel with my skin. Amen. I want to be led by the Holy Ghost and the power of God. And I believe I'll stand against the wiles of the devil. The ungodly and I soul, they're driven by the wind, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the ways of the ungodly shall perish. 
We don't want to go that way, right? We're going to listen to the Lord and heed his voice. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, another scripture along this line. And I know you know this, but I want to put your mind, stir your mind up to remember these things. I could take you to a scripture in the epistles to where Paul said to do that. To bring people to remember, to remind them of these things, to stir up their way of thinking. I mean, praise God, God's for us and not against us. And we are more than conquerors in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we got to go forth and stand strong in the Lord. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor for thou shalt meet at night, that thou mayest observe. You see, as we're listening to the Lord and observing the Lord, we get to where we begin to do it his way. Begin to think like he thinks. Begin to act like he acts. What would Jesus do? Remember that movement? WWJD? Well, well we, ought to be, we ought to be walkers of that. Observe Jesus. What would he do here? How would he respond to this? Would he take off and run? What would he say to that woman that they brought to him caught in adultery? Would he condemn her? Boy, the religious world of our day probably would. But what did he do? She found pardon with him. She found mercy. I'm not saying it's all right to commit adultery. Thunder, no. Shouldn't be doing that. But aren't you glad that God's a merciful God? Amen. Amen. If, if, we, if, if we sin, if we sin, if we make a mistake, if we must do that, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And other people say, no, it's not if, it's when, because we're going to. I don't make no plans on sinning. I'm not making plans for that. If I do, I do. But I thank God I'm not making plans to sin. Are you? No, we don't make plans to do that. We're going to listen. We'll listen to him. We put our mind and our meditation upon him. That thou might observe to do all that's written therein. For then, everybody say then. Then, then thou shalt make thy way successful. And then, say then. Then you shall have good success. When is the then going to happen? When's the then come? It's after you've meditated on the word of the Lord. And you say, do I got to do it day and night? No, you get to do it day and night. You can meditate on the length things of the Lord. You can listen to the Lord and let that mull over while you're transacting business in the natural. The Lord can lead you and guide you and direct you and speak to you. You can be having a Holy Ghost moment right in the middle of your job. Come on, I need a better amen than that. I know many of you have done that. Right in the middle of what you was doing, Holy Ghost goosebumps was running up and down. Amen. Thank God you can. See, I don't know about you, but I like that myself. I want to think about the things of God. When I get to thinking about the things of the devil, I see no advantage. I see no advantage to that. Amen. Amen. So let's keep our mind on the things of God. Yeah, the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said to take heed that you be not deceived. Well, how in the world would a born again child of God that's got the Holy Ghost living in them, how in the world would he be deceived? How could that person be deceived? I can tell you how they'd be deceived. By quit listening to the Lord. By quit looking to the Lord. They could get so entangled in this world. Look at there. He talked about that seed. The hard pan. And the birds ate them. The rocks and the sticks and the vines. And the, the cares of this world. Choked the word out. The devil will try any way he can to keep your harvest from manifesting. You got to be aware of that and stand against the tactics of the devil. Jesus will help you, will he not? If we'll listen to him and heed his voice. So Jesus said here in, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4, Jesus answered unto them and said, Take heed that you be not deceived. He was talking to his followers. Take heed that you be not deceived. We have bought uh, 
this little Passion Bible. I don't see, is it on the thing up there now? Karen, can you pull up the Passion Bible there, Dale? I've been reading to you, and it's kind of confusing going, but when it's up there, there you go. At that time, deception will be what? Rapid. I mean, think about this. Your, your Bible says that people will call good evil and evil good. Is that deception or what? I mean, that's the height of deception. But that's what Jesus said was coming. So beware that you're not fooled. Beware means be aware. Know these things are going on. Amen? You got to be aware of what the devil's up to and not fall into his tactics. Amen? So how are we going to keep that from happening? We're going to keep our mind and our hearts and our attention on the things of God. We're going to walk so close to Jesus. I want to walk so close to Jesus that he don't never have to clear his voice and say, <clears throat> Trent! No. I want to smell his breath when he calls my name. I want to be right up close to him that I can just hear a whisper. Amen? I mean, the closer I walk to him, I think the better I'll be. I, I mean, I, I want to walk so close to him, if he stopped to turn around, I'd probably bump into him. Amen? He gets track for track. Just get right up close to him. I believe he likes it. Amen? You ever played follow the leader? And what they do, they try to do things to weave out to get you. Jesus ain't doing that. He's not trying to throw you off track. Amen? He wants you to follow his leadership. Jesus said in order, in order for us to keep our minds and our, our emotions intact, we're going to have to understand the tactics of the devil. And he wants us to get off into la-la land and think about that and talk about that. And anything you talk about, anything you talk about over and over again, you make it bigger. It just happens. We all have a way of evangelizing. I mean, you, you've tried it before. You've been in them places to where you whisper something right here and there's a line of people. You've got to move that thing all the way down to this 20th person. By the time it got to the 20th person, it didn't hardly resemble what it was when it started. Translation problems. Well, I don't want to have to listen to Jesus through somebody else. Amen. Cut the translator out. Let's just come right on with the voice. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. I believe we've got to qualify that statement. He said, well, don't add to the Bible. I won't, but I'll, I'll discern what the Bible says. I believe you've got to live close to the Lord. I believe if you draw nine to him, he'll automatically draw nine to you. But I believe if you don't draw nine to him, you could get far away from him. Amen. So we have to put forth effort. Effort to not get sucked in to this world system and stay true to the spirit of the living God. Everything we've talked about will keep us from being deceived. If we'll, if we'll stay in the word of God and we'll listen to the word of God and, and, and not only to the written word of God, but as we're doing that, our meditation, our mind, our thoughts are towards him, the word. I'm developing a listening ear to him, Jesus, the word. And I want to, I want to be pure in that. I want to be, because I'm not just trying to be quote a Bible scholar. But I, I know some people that studied the Bible and went through the Bible religiously that I wouldn't want to follow their footsteps. I know, I know a person that's read the Bible through over 20 times and it embarrasses me when he tells people that because of the way he lives. And I think to myself, I believe it'd be better off if people thought you'd never read the Bible. Because anybody that read it 20 times ought to live better than that. So it's not re how many times you read the Bible. It's receiving him. Amen. Amen. So we need to receive the word, Jesus. In James chapter 1, in the book of James chapter 1, it gives us a, one of them interesting ingredients to this thing. 
James chapter 1 and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, it's not just listening to the word and looking at the word. My goal is to be a practitioner of the word. Because what happens if you don't do the word, you deceive yourself. Well, to me, the worst deception there is is self-deception. If you deceive me, that's one thing. But if I deceive myself, that's far different. So we don't want deception either way. And we don't have to be deceived, praise God. So we can listen to the Lord and stay in touch with him. Paul's letters are extremely important to us. Paul's letters, that's why I spend so much time in the epistles of Paul. Because they're written to what? The church. They're written specifically to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I think we should study the epistles more than we do any part of the Bible except maybe the gospels. We need the gospels too. But I know Old Testament scholars that's as wishy-washy as they can be. I mean, you, you know, if you want to get into something of the Old Testament, there's people that can take you to places and say, well, is this the God you want to serve? The one that had them to do this? Is that your God? I'm glad for the New Testament, aren't you? I'm glad for Jesus. I think Jesus is the balance of the whole thing. But I'm not going to go back and argue Old Testament scriptures with people. I want to live from the good things of the Old Testament, the promises of God. But I'm telling you, I'm a Jesus man. I believe Jesus to be our Savior, our leader, our, our master. We will make him Lord. Amen. And we've been dealing with some people that's looking for the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. In, in the Philippians chapter 4, some of the best in uh, it direction, some of the best ingredients, if you will, for Christian living is found right here, especially in our day and our time. Because I know there are some people that are, that are really concerned about our future, really concerned about what's going to happen to your children and your children's children. Naturally, we all have our concerns. But I tell you, the best thing you can do is keep your eyes upon the master. The best thing you can do is live your life listening to him, up close to him, and not get sucked into all the what ifs. I mean, you can take the what ifs and just destroy a good party. Huh? You're sitting there playing cars and drinking Kool-Aid and having a good time. Somebody says, well, what if a plane fell in this building? What? I mean, that's raining on your parade, ain't it? Let's, why worry about that? No, let's just enjoy ourselves. Amen. I believe we need to enjoy ourselves as a Christian. I believe there's a world out there that needs to see the joy of the Lord on your face. Amen. They need to see that your church affiliation and your worship of the Lord is your highlight of your life. Amen. And you can't help but talk about it because it's the desire of your heart. It's what you, it's what you live for. That's what you're here for is to worship him and to praise him. Amen. Philippians 4 just tells us in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Well, I mean, that's, if he says it and then says it again, he must mean it. Amen. So we need to find joy in the Lord. And you know, if you run out of gas, you go get some more gas. You need to regas. So if you run out of joy, I'm telling you, the best way to get happy is to start rejoicing. Amen. I guarantee you if things are flat and you start rejoicing in the Lord, it won't be long till you'll feel the unction of the Holy Ghost that'll help you rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Some people just sit down and write a song with the Mr. Jim. I mean, they feel the presence of the Lord. They just write another song. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's good. Write a song and sing it to the Lord. I used to, I wish to worship the Lord in the spirit and the spirit and just other tongues. And then a, that tongue would become reality. And I'd sing that song out to the Lord. I never wrote it down, but boys are good. <laughs> just sing it to the Lord and that's it. Amen. So, you know, that's all I wanted to do was just worship him in the spirit and in truth. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known among all men. What does that mean? Throw it up there, Brother Dale, in the Passion Bible. Let's see what it says about that. Amen. I like this Passion Bible. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is ever near. Amen. Your, your, your relationship with the Lord should be evident. It should be evident. 
after living in this area for all this time, I would really, in a sense, hate for somebody that's been around here for years to come to me and ask me if I was a Christian. I mean, is it not any more apparent than that? <laughs> you know, if it's a rank stranger, it'd be one thing. But somebody I dealt with year after year. I mean, the people that you're workforce, without you even really trying hard, should know that you're a Christian. People that you deal with on a very consistent basis should know beyond a, beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's a Jesus man, a Jesus woman. Amen? Amen. Why? That's, that's how we live. That's who we listen to. That's who we follow. That's who we mimic. We want to be just like him if possible. Amen. Well, he's my brother. Why shouldn't I be like him? Huh? People said me and Dennis look just alike. I never did forget him, forgive him for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we did because we were brothers. Neither one of us could have it. I want to look like Jesus, don't you? I want to act like him. I believe we can. Let your moderation be known. In other words, don't hide it that you're a Christian. And if you live your life wrongly, you're kind of ashamed of mentioning you're a Christian. Right? If you're on the edge and you're doing things that's not, quote, Christ-like, you're not bold to tell people about Jesus. Amen? If you're about half drunk in the tavern, you're going to talk about church? Probably not. Well, it might be a good time not to do that. Matter of fact, I had a person that come to church here for a long time that lived such a life, I told him, I'd rather you didn't tell anybody where you went to church. You're sure not a reflection upon what we believe around here. Why don't you get saved and get right with the Lord so you can be a testimony out there? Amen? I may be hard preaching, but it's the truth. And then he says, be anxious for nothing. Verse 6, in the, what does that Bible say, Brother Dale? Be careful for nothing but in everything. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offer your faith-filled request before the Lord with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Isn't that wonderful to have somebody that you can openly talk to about every you, you don't have to try to hide nothing. Really, you can't hide anything in him. But you can talk to him. And, and he's, he's got an ear that will listen. Amen. Amen. You can, in a sense, if you need to, cry on his shoulder. He's got broad shoulders. And he's waterproof. <laughs> Amen. So he's, that's, that's our Jesus. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication. Everybody say everything. Now, now how much do you think that is? When it says it, but in everything, does he care? Amen. If it's in everything, does he care? Yes. I mean, if, he's, if he says in everything, what, what, what's, how are you going to do that in prayer? How in the world are you going in everything you do, get down there on your knees, and you're going to get all that took care of in your seven-minute prayer time? You can't. So what do you got to do? You've got to develop a communication with Jesus as you walk along the way. You've got to be in tune with Jesus so he can talk to you as you go along the way. Amen. Amen. Just listen to him. Minding your own business and the Lord breaks in with something. I was sitting in the, my office the other day and the Spirit of God spoke to me about something. I said, really? So I called my stock person, stock market person. And I says to him, I have a sensing that I need to purchase this right here. He said, oh, no, you don't, you don't want to purchase that. I said, well, either you or the Holy Ghost one wrong. And I'm going to put my bet on you being wrong. So if you want to do it, I want you to purchase da, 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 da. Well. All right, I can do it. I said, well, good. 
Well, I checked a while ago and it just made 900 and something dollars. <laughs> Since Friday. Early Friday. Cha-ching. Minding my own business. He knows how to take care of you. Why should you worry about it? Just go on, mind your own business and do what you know you're supposed to do and listen to him. And if he says do something, do it. And you might have to drag that other person along with you if they're involved in it, but it won't be long after you prove to yourself and prove to them a few times, they'll be calling you, say, you heard anything else? <laughs> when he tried to talk me out of it, I reminded him of the last time he tried to talk me out of something. I said, you remember such and such? He said, oh yeah, I remember that. I said, you said the same thing about that. He said, okay, I'll buy it. And I'm not trying to be smart or braggadocious. No, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about Philip Trent's wisdom. I don't have enough sense to do nothing like that. I don't even want to get involved in that. I just want to listen to him. Amen. Amen. And if you will, I believe he'll lead you into the green pastures. I believe he'll lead you beside the still waters. I believe even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you won't have to worry about it. He got a table prepared for you. You may wear number 11, but your feet can still get under that table. Amen. Amen. And he'll provide it for you right in the middle of where the enemies are. Right in the middle of all kind of problems. Your transmission may go out. He got another. Amen. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. Just go on, praise God, listen to Jesus. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. In everything. How much is that now? By prayer and supplication. You can't sit around all your day long, one knee on the floor praying. But the Bible says we ought to pray without ceasing. Now how are you going to do that? You work hard for your money. You can't just pray all the time while you at work. Or can you? I believe you can in God's economy. God's way, you can listen. You can tune in. You can tune in to him and listen to him 24-7 if need be. I believe he knows where I sleep. If he needs me, he knows how to get me, get me up. Amen? Praise God. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just telling you, we don't have to worry about this thing. Let's just get in touch with the Lord and listen to him by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I think you ought to praise the Lord often. Let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which path is all understanding. The Passion Bible says what? The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding. I mean, you, you, you can't even figure out why you're at peace. I mean, people are tore all to pieces and you just sit there like you're ignorant or something to what's going on. You're oblivious. We've been in hospital rooms. We've been in places where people were under attack and suspicions. Doctors say, well, it could be this and it could be that. And they're going to tell you worst case scenarios. Huh? They're going to tell you worst case scenarios. Well, we don't know. It just could be this. Well, yeah, yeah, it could. It could. There could be an airplane fall out of the sky or on the hospital. I understand that. <laughs> Happens every day, don't it? No. It could be this. Well, but you've got inside information. You've got peace. That what transcends all understanding. It's not that you're not concerned. You, you, you care. But there's something that's a hold to me. Amen. Remember that's something got a hold on me. Mm, something got a hold on me. Well, I went to the river that night and I came out and everything was all right because something got a hold on me. What is that something? It's someone. Someone gets a hold on you and you're going you're gonna to be all right. I mean, there may be prognosis that don't look right, but you're not moved by that. You're moved by the Spirit of God. 
that leads you and guides you and tells you, you got, it's going to be okay. Amen. It, there, may be, there may be some moments, there may be some difficulties, there may be some issues, but God is not going to let you down. He's going to stay with you. Now you reckon, I mean, we've talked about this before, reckon in the time of the Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. Remember them boys? You reckon they was facing something sort of likened to what's being faced today? Such things that's coming down the pike. If this other bunch gets in office, well, we're, we're praying and we're going to vote that it stays where it's at. But I don't know. Some people said, well, I've read the book and it's got to go this way. Well, I'm trying my best to keep it, not let it go that way while it's on my watch. Amen. We're going to vote the Bible. Amen. We're going to keep doing what God tells us. Well, but what's going to happen if you don't? Well, I, I'm not worried about that. God took care of the children of Israel right in the middle of everything going on. God took care of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the middle of the ungodless mess it could be. And people still talk about that, don't they? We're talking about it now. I believe my God's able to take care of us. I believe he'll be the first man in the fire. Amen. He won't get in there the fourth man because if he waits to the fourth man, you'd done be gone by then. He'll be in there ahead of you. Amen. And I'm thankful that he is. So my, I'm just telling you, don't set your mind on worry and fret and anxiety. Get a hold of the Spirit of God and let the Spirit of God lead you and guide you and direct you. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Continue to meditate in the Word of God day and night and night and day that you might make your way successful, that you might make your way prosperous. God knows how to take care of you in every situation, and He will. Amen? Amen. The main thing I got to do is continue to have a listening ear and an obedient heart. Amen. Amen. Every eye closed. Every head bowed. Jesus, we thank you for being such an awesome Savior. We thank you that we know that your kingdom is not food and drink, but your kingdom is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We realize we've had a lot of good foods and drinks. But we realize there's people that have that and then they're full of anxiety and worry and stress about how they're going to pay the credit card bill when it comes in. Lord, I thank you for leading us and guiding us into the, into the true blessings of life. We desire to keep our eye upon you and to, as a result, live the God kind of life here even in the midst of difficult situations. I thank you, Father, for our president and his staff. And, and we believe he's the right man for the hour. But God, our eyes are upon you. We trust you. And we will follow you. We will vote the right way. We will do the right thing, the very best we know how. But when it's all said and done, our eyes are upon you. We're going to listen to you. And we trust you to take care of business for us. Lord, I thank you for this people that gathered here today out of their love for you and desire to see your ministry flourish in this region, that we could be an outreach to the masses of people that's hurting and in needs. And many of those people have been ministered to even this week, and we thank you for that. I thank you for each of these, Father. And I, I know not the situation they're dealing with. I know not the problems, but I know you do. You know each and every one of them, and you're there for them. And so I just pray that connection be tighter than it's ever been. With every person here, their, their love for you and their walk with you and their, their ability to hear you get stronger and stronger and stronger, not weaker. That we might go forth and we might achieve what you've called for us individually and corporately to achieve. Father, I pray for these that's Watch today by the way of Facebook or those that will even tune into this program as this week goes on. And as I lift them up to you, Lord, I know you know every single one of them individually. And you're able to meet and exceed every need that they have and even want that they have by the power of your spirit. 
And so I thank you for them, Father. I bless them in the name of Jesus, and I bless this people here. Anything, Lord, that you want done in this house today, I ask you for a word, a knowledge, a word of wisdom. I ask you for the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Father, if there's one in the sound of my voice, wherever my voice is going, that does not know you, that has never received you as their personal Savior, that's never called upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray the gripping power, the grip of the Holy Spirit upon them would grip them right now to know that they need to make a commitment to you, that they need to trust you, they need to call upon you to be saved. And you promised that all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I pray that that be done today, here and abroad, wherever this program's going. I thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy, and your grace, and your sustaining, healing, delivering, saving power that's omnipresent. I bless you today, Father, and I bless this people. May your kingdom come. Oh, Father, may your kingdom come and may your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Help us to forgive those who's done evil against us. And I thank you, Lord, for not leading us into temptation that's beyond our ability. But even if we are tempted, you give us the ability to stand against the temptation. Resist the evil one and draw near unto you. I bless you today, Lord, and I bless this people. If they were eye closed and head bowed, if you're here today and you've never, ever called upon the name of the Lord Jesus to be your Savior, if you're watching by the way of TV or Facebook, whatever you call this thing, you've never called upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, that they, if you call upon the name of the Lord, that's in faith believing. That's believing that Jesus is the Son of God. That's believing that Jesus was made a sin offering for you. The sacrifice of Jesus is so precious to us that we believe that he died for us. We believe he gave his life that we might have life, that just for the unjust, that we might come to God. If you're here today and you've never taken advantage of that, you've never truly called upon the name of the Lord, is he knocking on your heart's door today? Is he asking, will you open the door and allow me to come into your life today? Will you allow me to be your savior? Will you allow me to be your Lord? See, Jesus is willing. The door's opening from your side. He can't barge in. If you see Jesus in the painting standing at the door, you'll notice that door don't have a knob on his side. The knob's on your side. Open up your heart. Open up your heart to say, today and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash me. I want to be your child. I want to worship you. I want to serve you. I believe, I believe in you. I trust in you today. Is that you today? If you're here today and the Lord is tugging at your heart, won't you receive him today? If that's you, won't you come to this altar this morning? And by your coming to this altar, you're saying, I want to ask Jesus into my heart today. Come in. Anybody? Well, praise the Lord. That means one of two things to me. That means everybody in here is a Christian or you don't sense the presence of the Lord tugging at your heart. Either way, we move on. You can go ahead and cut the audience if you want to. God bless you. We'll see you next week if you tune in.